In this video, we're going to be going head to head with the Ryzen 5 5600 against the Ryzen 9 5900X. And we're going to be comparing the game performance against uh, these two CPUs using a 47Ti. Now, the Ryzen 5 5600 is the cheapest 5000 series CPU that you can get, excluding the Ryzen 5 5500. The reason why we're not using the 5500 is that it's a stripped down version of the 5600G, which is an APU. And even though they have comparable specs on paper as far as clock speeds and things like that, the L3 cache is half that on a 5500 than what it is on a 5600, and that cripples that CPU compared to the 5600. And all you have to do to kind of get a sense of how much that L3 cache actually matters is one of the best gaming CPUs out there are the 7 X3D and the 5800X3D, which both have almost 100 megabytes of L3 cache. Now, both these CPUs are Zen 3 CPUs. They're both using Vermeer uh, cores. So they are fairly identical, except when you start looking at core count. The Ryzen 5 5600 is a 6 core, 12 thread CPU. Meanwhile, the Ryzen 9 5900X is a 12 core, 24 thread CPU. So right off the bat, it has double the cores. As well, it does have uh, a slightly higher uh, base clock speed, so 3.7 versus the 3.5 gigahertz, and it has a higher boost clock, which is 4.8 gigahertz versus 4.4 gigahertz. And throughout everything else, L1 is the same, L2 is the king. So even though the 5900X does have double the L3 cache, that L3 cache is split between two different chiplets on the CPU. So how well do those better specs actually translate into better gaming performance? Well, we are going to look into that in this video. So we're going to be looking at 1080p and 1440p, and I kind of have the game split into several different categories. We have like current gen AAA games, we have some older games, and then we have esports titles, uh, which are Fortnite and Call of Duty Warzone. Before we get into some games, we're going to look at some synthetic benchmarks. We're going to start off with Cinebunch R23. And as far as single core goes, the 5900X does perform about 10% better at 1,583 points versus the 1,438 points for the 5600. And what's to be expected when we're looking at multi cores, it does double the cores. We are actually seeing double the performance at 101% better performance over the 5600. Not surprisingly. Moving on to Blender, again, we're seeing better performance with the 5900X uh, as synthetic benchmarks. Running through the different scenarios, classroom, junk shop, and monster, and pretty much every aspect, the 5900X performs about double, if not more, uh, than the 5600. On Classroom, we have 108% better performance. Uh, junk Shop does 109% better performance. And in Monster, it's 128% better performance. So as far as synthetic benchmarks go, in those sort of tasks that can actually leverage those extra cores, you are going to see a much better result using the 5900X over the 5600. However, when we get into gaming, that doesn't always translate just because a we might be hitting up against the top limit that the gpu can perform so there's not there won't be any bottleneck and b not all games can utilize all those cores efficiently so starting off with 1080p uh triple a games these are the current ones that probably came out within the past two years we do see better performance at 1080p and with the 5900X over the 5600 in both um, average FPS and the 1% low. Also keeping in mind in this scenario, I do believe with testing I've done before, the 5900X at 1080p is still bottleneck in the 4070Ti. Testing it with my set Ryzen 9 7900X on the AM5 platform, the 4070Ti performed better with the 7900X at 1080p than the 5900X. But back to the 5600 versus the 5900X. In every scenario, the 5900X does perform better. Looking at Star Wars Jedi Survivor, we are seeing an 11% better FPS on average FPS. And at the 1% lows, we are seeing a performance that is 8% better. 
So the D900 X picks up 11 FPS on average, and on uh, the 1% low, it's only picking up 4 FPS. Moving on to Starfield, we are seeing a 9% better performance on the average FPS, 87 versus 80. And when we're looking at the 1% low, there really isn't much difference there. It's 51 versus 50. Hogwarts Legacy, another game where it's benefiting from having those extra cores. We're actually seeing a 23% increase in performance with the 5900X on the average FPS. We're seeing 107 versus 87, 5600. But when we look at the 1% low, we're, there's not much difference there. We're at 48 versus 47 on the 5600. Forza Motorsport, uh, another high FPS game. We're seeing pretty good performance increase with 5900X. We have 23% better performance with 5900X at the average on the average FPS, and we are also seeing a 25% boost in performance and the 1% low with the 5900X. So overall, Forza Motorsport is able to utilize those extra cores very well. And then last but not least, we're going to be looking at Cyberpunk 2077. And in this game, the 5900X is able to get an 11% boost on the average FPS at 136 FPS versus 123. And at the 1% low, we actually seen a pretty big bump as well, 17% increase over the 5600. So the 5900X is at 84 FPS versus the 5600 at 72 FPS for the 1% low. So as you can see here at 1080p in these AAA games, the 5900X makes a huge difference over the 5600, and it seems to get to be an even bigger difference the higher the FPS count is. Uh, what I mean by that is like when you're looking at Starfield, we have 87 uh, average FPS versus 80, whereas a Ford was a motorsport where you get 117 FPS versus 95. Again, this is 1080p not really where we're, where most people would be using the 4070 Ti. The 4070 Ti is a really good high-end 1440p uh, gaming card, so it'll be interesting to see what the uh, performance difference is at that, uh, that uh, resolution. But moving on to some less demanding games, uh, we're seeing Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it has a 15% increased performance at the um, average, so 188 versus 163 on the 5600. And we're also picking up an extra 20% uh, performance at the 1% low with the 5900X, so it's 120 versus 100. Again, these are ridiculously high uh, FPS at this level. You're not really going to notice much of a difference while you're gaming. You're getting 188 versus 163 because the 4070 is not made to be a 1080p card, so you are going to end up with uh, a bottleneck. And both, oh, even the 5900X, will be bottlenecking this GP. And then on to Far Cry 6, we are seeing a 17% increase in FPS on the average FPS, so 100. Two versus 87 and then on the one percent low we have a 12 percent increase which is uh 58 versus 52 and then moving on to assassin's creed bahala the one percent or the average is about nine percent better at 150 versus 138 and the one percent low is 11 percent better with the united x at 93 versus 80 so even with older titles the 5900x uh does perform substantially better than the 5600. Now moving on to esports titles, we have Call of Duty Warzone. So for the average FPS, the 5900X does perform 20% better, 163 FPS versus the 136. And at the 1% low, we are performing 23% better with the 5900X, so we're getting 92 FPS versus 75. So Call of Duty is definitely able to utilize extra cores a lot better than the 5600. So you get substantially better performance. And then on the Fortnite, uh, this is DirectX 12, Nanite's on, everything's on. So this is not performance mode. We're playing Fortnite here uh, with everything on high. And it, so actually, I should mention with all the games, all the 
settings are maxed out. So on Fortnite, we're actually not seeing much of a difference. There's a 3% increase with the 1500 RX. So we're getting 81 FPS versus 79 on the average. And the 1% low, we are picking up a little bit extra. We got 15% better performance. So we're seeing a 1% low of 53 versus 46. I should have mentioned Fortnite is using uh, Unreal Engine 5, which is very demanding with Nanite and all those other settings on. So when it actually comes to 1080p gaming, as we'll see here, uh, the 4070 Ti is probably a little too powerful for the most part. And I probably wouldn't go, especially with the 5600, 4070 would probably be the max I would go at 1080p gaming based on what we're seeing here as far as the difference between the 5100X and 5600 with the uh, performance differences. Uh, the 4070 would probably be getting close to what the max the 5600 could handle at 1080p. So moving on to 1440p, things are starting to get a lot closer. So with Star Wars Jedi Survivor, when it comes to the average, we're seeing no difference. They're both getting 40, er, 77 FPS, but when we move down to the 1% low, we are getting 5% extra performance, but that only translates into 2 extra FPS. So we're seeing 46 over 44. Not much difference there. Again, same with Starfield, with that seeing the same. 59 RX, I'm getting 71 versus 69. So we're only seeing a 2 FPS difference there. Not really big. That can fall within the margin of error. And the 1% low, we are picking up an extra 3 FPS, which is 50 versus 47. Hogwarts Legacy, when it comes to the average, we're actually seeing a little bit of a bump. The 5900 RX is performing 11% better. We're getting 94 FPS versus 85. But when we get to the 1% low, they're both sitting at 30. There's no difference there. Forza Motorsport, uh, which it's not as demanding as the other games, so we are seeing the 5900 RX able to pick up an extra 15% in performance over the D600, so it's 107 FPS versus the 93. And at the 1% low, we're seeing an 8% boost there as well, so we're getting 68 FPS versus 63. And then when you get to Cyberpunk 2077, uh, the average pretty much isn't different. We've got 88 versus 87. And then on the 1% low, it's 64 versus 61. So not a big difference there. So they're definitely closing the gap at 1440p. A uh, couple of games, Hogwarts Legacy and for the Wild Sport, we are seeing uh, a pretty good pickup with the RX, But with the rest of the game, there's not much difference there. With the older titles, we are seeing a little bit more uh, of a difference here as well. But again, that difference is shrinking. With Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the average FPS is only 9% higher with the 5900X over the 5600. Then when we're looking at the 1% low, it's picking up an additional 13% over the 5600. Far Cry 6, the average is 18% better on the 5900X. We're getting 97 versus 82 FPS. And then when we look at the 1% low, we're getting 60 versus 52, which is a 15% increase for the 1500 x And then when we move down to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the performance shrinks even more. We have a 3% increase in performance with the 1500X, where it's at 121 versus 117, which really isn't that much. And then when we move on to the 1% low, it's a 7% increase at 77 versus 72, again, which isn't that much. When you're comparing the price of the 5600 with 5900X, uh, you're not really picking up that much FPS for double the price. And then moving on to eSport titles. Again, Call of Duty is still able to take advantage of those extra cores and give it a pretty big bump in performance. So, so we're seeing a 28% increase in performance uh, on the average, so 164 versus 128. We're seeing a pretty big pickup on the 1% low, 106% better performance. So we're getting a 99, uh, 1% low with the 5900X versus 48 on the 5600. And then moving on to Fortnite, we're still seeing pretty similar performance. We have a 7% increase in performance with the 5900X or the 5600, which only translates into four additional FPS. So we got 58 versus 54. And we're seeing an 11% increase in performance on the 1%. That's only a 4% or 4 FPS difference. That's 41 versus 37. Not a big difference there. 
So the 4070 Ti is designed to be a uh, high-end 1440p card. And as you can see, using the 5600 in 1440p closes the gap considerably because it doesn't have to keep up as much with the, the frames that are being generated by the card. And then in moving on to 4K, as you can see, for the most part, everything is pretty much the same between the 5600 and the 5900X. We're getting to the point where the CPU is not the bottleneck, the GPU is becoming the bottleneck. Except in Hogwarts Legacy, we're actually seeing pickup in performance. Uh, not a big pickup, but we are seeing 5% additional uh, performance and the one percent or in the average so it's 59 versus 56 but that only translates into an extra three fps and the same goes with the one percent low we're picking up an additional two fps with the denier x which translates into seven percent however when we're working with such small numbers here that a couple fps actually translates into a fair a much bigger percentage but then with star wars uh, survivor starfield was a motorsport and cyberpunk 2077 all the performance is pretty much the same between the 5900X and the 5600. And we're even seeing that when we move on to some of the older titles, everything is pretty much the same except for Far Cry. Uh, Far Cry 6, when I was laying the benchmark, that the game gets really... I have trouble no matter what, right? Those benchmarks. Everything is very jittery and leggy that even though the 5600 is beating the 5900X, I would take that with a grain of salt because it just seems to be... Uh, there seems to be bugs in that game at 4K. But between Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Assassin's Creed Valhalla, everything is pretty much identical. Then moving on to the esports titles, we actually are still seeing a pretty big bump in performance. Call of Duty Warzone, even at 4K, does a great job of using those extra cores. So we are getting a pretty big bump in performance. Uh, for the average, we're seeing an extra 20% increase, which translates to an extra 17 FPS, so 102 versus 85. But more impressively, it's the 1% low. Uh, at 48 versus 25, we're getting a 92% increase in performance with the 5900X, which makes Call of Duty playable at 4K using the 5900X. Not so with the 5600, because with that 1% low being 25, you're going to have some, uh, you're going to experience some lagginess and some spiking. And then on the Fortnite, I would not be playing this game. Uh, you can get by playing in performance mode, but Fortnite with um, Nanite and all that on, it's going to be painful to play with 30 FPS or 20 FPS, regardless of uh, which CPU you use. So as you can see there, the 4070Ti still is a pretty powerful CPU, and at 1080p, the 5900X definitely does a better job of being able to handle the 4070Ti than the 5600. However, when you start getting into 1440p, the 5600 picks up. Like There's not as big of a difference between those two CPUs at that resolution that, in my personal opinion, I would rather, if it came down to getting a better GPU or a better CPU, I would be putting my money towards, I would go with the 5600 and put my money towards having a better GPU. 